Hi everyone, thank you so much for coming to uh, this info session about LATAM Startups and our programs. Uh, my name is Miriam Lazarte. I'm the CEO of LATAM Startups. Uh, you will see also here Samuel. Samuel is our uh, communications manager, uh, marketing coordinator, sorry. And uh, he is here, uh, you know, basically to support the, uh, um, uh, the presentation in some ways. Uh, he probably is going to share some of the links that, that I'm going to have here. <laughs> but in the meantime, uh, I just wanted to tell you that, uh, you know, we have very exciting news in general about our programs. Uh, we are starting into a phase that, uh, you know, people are going to be uh, uh, join our programs in rolling basis, uh, which is uh, really great. Um, the number of applications we are getting uh, every day um, is, is basically um, enough to support the rolling basis program. Uh, so that's part of the information we are going to have here. I will ask you to please uh, keep your microphone um, just uh, muted for, for this time of the uh, of this session. And if you have any questions, you can post it, of course, in the chat box, or you can just open your microphone if you have any questions. Uh, I just wanted to go through, uh, you know, how you can navigate our website and give some instructions about, uh, you know, how we are working the programs from June and on, and how we are going to be working with startups, international startups so far. Uh, so just, uh, you know, as an initial part of this, uh, I will start with, a, uh, you know, who we are and why we are doing all this. Uh, so basically, uh, you know, we are a nonprofit organization based here in Toronto. Uh, we can be, uh, you know, either way incubator, accelerator, depending of, you know, uh, the stage of the startup that we are receiving, we may be perceived as an incubator or accelerator. We are a part of the Startup Visa program, uh, which is a federal program from the government of Canada supporting international startups to relocate in Canada or open second headquarters. And uh, we are also a part of NACO, which is the National Angel Capital Organization with over 3,000 angels in their network across Canada. But besides that, of course, we have connections with many other angels and many other institutions. The reason why uh, we have LATAM startups uh, since 2017 with the programs is because, as uh, you know, uh, we are a very diverse type of community. We understand international um, uh, startups and newcomers, and we want them to help them, uh, you know, to integrate better in the ecosystem, knowing that, you know, there are so many great accelerators and incubators in the market, but sometimes, you know, uh, access into those programs can be become a little bit difficult for international startups to actually understand better uh, the structure of, uh, you know, these incubators and accelerators in the market. So we keep a very close relationship with them. We work very close with them and we try our best, uh, you know, to provide um, uh, the best connections for this initial stage for the startups that are bringing their companies here to Canada. Uh, so one thing that I have to say is that many times uh, we have this misconception about uh, what is a startup per se? In our community, startup is a company, a technology company that brings either a service or product in technology. Uh, it could be from biotechnology uh, to, uh, you know, IoT, FinTech, uh, different type of technologies, and they have intellectual property over that technology. Uh, usually, uh, our startups already have some kind of traction in their local market. Um, the reason why we call it startup is because when they enter to the Canadian market, North American market, they tend to be a new company uh, or basically starting from scratch to enter to this market. So they will be perceived as a, a startup, although many times are scale ups. Um, so you can see in our website, uh, very clear who is our board of directors, very experienced people in the market uh, that uh, have been helping us to shape uh, our community. So between them, we have Valerie Fox, who is the uh, person who uh, funded DMC Ryerson. Uh, DMC Ryerson is the number one business incubator in the world uh, linked with university. And as well, we have investors in our uh, board of directors like Peter Elkins and Marcus Schreger. Uh, both of them run their own programs and their own startups. Marcus Schreger has a biotechnology accelerator in Chile. He works uh, with Chile and Brazil particularly. Um, we have Rafael Pinto that has worked with uh, some diplomatic level uh, with some countries in Latin America. Uh, Catherine Rose um, works for 
uh, over 20 years uh, with different business incubators in Canada. And Michael Kennedy uh, currently is a business advisor, financial advisor for CIBC and works with different type of investors and startups um, at different levels. Uh, so our team is here. Uh, you can also see each of the uh, team members that currently work with the startups in different stages. And uh, we have also our mentors and partners in our website that you can pretty much go and explore yourself. Uh, but all of our mentors are very experienced people in their field. Uh, either way, they have their own companies and they have uh, you know, exited uh, several times their companies or they work with big co corporations. They understand how to support the startups in different levels. Um, so being said that, I'm going to pass uh, you know, to our programs, what type of programs we have right now and how we are going to be working in rolling basis. Um, so the first phase of the program is the market validation part. And this part sometimes is a little bit dismissed by the startups. <laughs> I have to say that many people think that they have the market validated already. Uh, what we find many times is that the startups are still, uh, you know, unknowing many uh, things and many opportunities that this market can bring to them, but as well, many challenges that you may have uh, bringing your company here. So the ideal um, case for us is to have companies at least one month in, this, in the market validation program. Um, it, this can be extended for sure, uh, you know, per month, but it will be expensive uh, for companies if they try to spend more than uh, one month uh, for market validation program. Um, so we don't have a limitation in timing for the market validation program, but we love to uh, progress with the companies as fast as possible so they can actually launch their companies in the Canadian market to enter to North America and other markets. Um, so we work a lot in what is the legal framework uh, for the companies. Uh, in many cases, because our startups are international, we work in the different immigration process that they are going through. Um, because startup visa program is not the only uh, path for many companies. You can also immigrate as, uh, under intercompany transfer, many other opportunities that newcomers can have uh, having a company and immigrating to Canada. So we go through uh, the different uh, programs, uh, immigration programs that are good for international startups. We also have kind of a customer discovery in North America because also this is very important for uh, international startups to understand that uh, you know, uh, the customer may be different from your home country and the way that you approach to them is also different. Uh, so it, you know, this part is actually um, kind of a discovery as it says uh, for many startups, uh, you know, understanding how to network and communicate, uh, getting your international business plan done and financial forecast in North America and understanding also angel investment and grants in the market. So pretty much uh, with companies that are kind of, uh, you know, ready to take this advantage, they can do this in a month, probably, uh, you know, that's our hope uh, in the rolling basis program. Right now we do this stage in, in two weeks, actually, uh, but we realize that, you know, over the time that companies may require a little bit more time. That's why we are putting in a month and we have seen companies that requires over a month to actually validate market. Uh, so that's why the rolling base is giving that flexibility for companies to stay over if they need to do that. Um, what is the criteria for this stage is, as I mentioned at the beginning, that the company is a technology company with intellectual property. Uh, it has to have some financial stability. And the reason why is because Canada, Toronto in particular, is a very expensive market. Um, what the government of Canada, if you are aiming for a startup visa program, uh, is looking for is for global type of companies. They are not looking for a small, medium companies. And because of that, uh, you know, companies require to have some financial um, support for the first year uh, of operations in Canada. Uh, it's, it's not very realistic to think about, uh, you know, getting... Um, uh, angel investment in the first year uh, or getting a good amount of sales in the first year enough to support the company operations in that first year. So that's why 
we try to look for companies that already have some kind of financial stability and they can take that first year while they are approaching to the ecosystem. Of course, we are looking for coachable teams and people that are open-minded uh, to change their business model. I have to say, uh, normally, uh, you know, for companies that come into uh, the first phase of the program uh, that I mentioned that up to now has been two weeks uh, program, 92% of the companies actually change uh, their business model. So this is very important for you to understand that, uh, you know, a, be coachable sometimes means that you may have to uh, have some changes in their company, in the business model, in different ways in order to actually, uh, you know, enter to this market that is pretty complex uh, for many international companies. Uh, for many companies, it will be a requirement to uh, willing to relocate in Canada. Sometimes we don't need to have every single co-founder in Canada, but maybe, uh, you know, a couple of co-founders uh, coming here, uh, you know, uh, it's important for us to have them uh, in presence in here when, you know, COVID and everything finish. Uh, so far, we have been able to uh, deliver everything online and some of the uh, co-founders have been able to actually travel uh, uh, to Canada, but uh, you know, in the the third stage, uh, which is a Stata Visa program, we uh, are aiming for companies or co-founders to actually be here. And all the company, uh, all the co-founders, of course, require to have some English uh, level. Uh, you know, um, in particular for for us, it's, it's very important to communicate with the uh, with the mentors. So now I have a question here: What is the duration of the program? Uh, I mentioned this first uh, part, uh, we are aiming to have companies at least one month. Uh, you know, the commitment is one month for this first part of the program. Companies can continue over a month if they feel like, uh, you know, they need more time or our mentors and advising that they need more time to validate, but the, the real, uh, you know, uh, um, the best case scenario for us is that market validation should be for one month. So I'm going to continue with the second stage of the program, uh, which in this case is uh, the market entry program. Uh, once you know, uh, you know what are your opportunities and challenges in the market, we enter to market entry program uh, where we are basically entering into focus groups and talking directly with potential customers and potential partners in the market, getting an opinion from them about uh, how a uh, company is actually doing and how people are perceiving the services if they want to actually uh, buy those services or buy those products and uh, you know enter uh, basically have some business with the companies we work in a pitch sell uh, is it, this is not the investor's pitch this is the sales pitch uh, basically, because at the beginning, we are focusing in that the companies uh, will have to get uh, actually customers. Whatever you can uh, have in your mind about investment, uh, you know, for us, it's very important that companies get traction. Uh, so uh, getting customers is not easy in North America. We have to work a lot in that sales pitch. Um, so, of course, building community, uh, get to know how to negotiate uh, with different type of partners and people in the market, uh, complete international business plan, because we usually we don't have that <laughs> in the first phase. Many people actually don't finish their business plans. Uh, so we are not aiming for the first phase to finish the international business plan, but we are aiming in the second phase to finish that part. Uh, of course, identify grants and investment plans uh, for what is the future of the company. Uh, start the intellectual uh, property strategy, which is extremely important for companies that are relocating in Canada and launching a Canadian corporation. So have different uh, comments here in the chat. So I will go through them. Does the total cost of the startup visa program $9,500 plus the cost of living? Um, Marcus, you, that, that's the cost of the program. That the cost of incorporation, living, and other things is totally a part of that cost. That's just covered in the six months program in the Stata Visa program. And as I mentioned at the beginning, we are non profit corporations, so we are not getting profit from this. We're basically paying 
uh, you know, staff and mentors in order to deliver the programs. Uh, but 80% of the incubators and accelerators in the market are nonprofit. So we work very similar in this way. Uh, does any programs apply to companies already established in Canada with main operations in Latin America, especially for uh, the scale up company? Yes, uh, Luis, we do have uh, different programs and actually we have, uh, you know, startups that have come to us already with uh, companies incorporated in Canada. You should take a look to, to Innovation Center and the corporate program. And that doesn't have to be exactly like this one. The corporate program is basically a customized program for uh, um, companies that are either way in Latin America or Canada, they need some support in order to uh, enter to the market. Either, uh, you know, they are required to increase sales, they are requiring talent, uh, you know, there are like eight points that you will see under the innovation center that you can take advantage on that program. And it has a minimum commitment of three months for that one. Um, what is the minimum? Uh, okay, what is the minimum amount to start it must have to qualify or to start with? Uh, Liberty, that's a very good question. And we get that question many times. And that depends of the, uh, uh, you know, not sure of the uh, particularities of the company. Uh, so many times, let's say you have one or two co-founders or three co-founders, you have to think in that uh, those co-founders require to have a salary per se annually. That's what the government is expecting is that you are going to get your salary paid, uh, payroll paid, uh, you know, operation and cost. Uh, so usually the companies that come to our uh, programs, they already have a, an annual a budget of $200,000 at $250,000 annually that's the average but i i have to say each company is different sometimes we have some with way more uh you know revenue over 10 million 13 million we have a pre-unicorn even in the last cohort uh up to some companies that basically are operating uh you know in a, a pre-commercialization stage uh those cases are more complicated uh the ones that are for example in green tech clean tech or biotechnology and they may require, uh, you know, some extra grants in the markets to operate. So it totally depends. So that's why we encourage you uh, guys to fill out the application because then we can take a look of your case and tell you if uh, the budget that you're proposing is actually good. But you have to think uh, about, you know, if you are aiming for a startup visa program, many startups actually aim for the startup visa program. Uh, the government is going to look at your company as a global company and they need to see that you actually have enough budget to operate for a year. So that, that will be very, um, very key for, for that part. Uh, so I have another question here. My startup is in prototype phase. Uh, do you qualify for any of the programs without intellectual property? Uh, you can take a look probably to the innovation center, uh, but I will say not really. Uh, if you are aiming for a startup visa program, you necessarily need to have intellectual property. Uh, that's no question for that part. And unfortunately, uh, you know, it's, it's required some budget around that because again, what the government is aiming is for global companies and they are not looking to support the small medium businesses under a startup visa program. Being said that, I have to say also that there are too many other programs in the market that may accept you into prototype phase. So you will have to do your research and, me, and, and you know, make sure that you, uh, you have the right um, uh, you know, company to enter into startup visa program if that's your case. So Walter uh, is asking here, just to clarify, the company charges LATAM to 0.5K per month, uh, three months to set up the company uh, with all the support I mentioned here. Yes, uh, Walter, that's the case. Um, so our uh, best case is that for the first phase, which is market validation, the companies will stay a month. And the second phase, our best case is that startups will stay two months before entering to start a visa program. So in total will be around three months before companies start to uh, start in a start a visa program. Again, uh, because this is a rolling basis program, uh, we cannot tell 100% sure because that's depending on each case. 
that companies will stay for that minimum amount of time, which is three months. Um, that's our best case scenario. And that's what we like to work with the companies. We like to work with that amount of time because we want to uh, advance as soon as possible. But it may be cases uh, that they need to extend the, their period of time with us. We kind of evaluate those cases. Um, it has happened in the past that companies at the end, either phase one or phase two, they require more time to stay with us. Um, and we haven't been able to actually continue with those cases because in the past, we just have two cohorts per year, one in March and one in September, and our resources were totally to support companies for the three months program. At this point, we can actually work a little bit more with those companies, but it won't be our best case scenario to actually go with that part. Um, how much is the total for the cost of the startup program? Uh, Cynthia, as Walter mentioned that, uh, each month costs uh, $2,500, okay? This is American dollars uh, per month, up to five co-founders. So the, the total cost of the program covers up to five co-founders in the program. The minimum amount of uh, you know, time commitment will be three months. And after that, uh, then the startup visa program is a cohort type of program. So that doesn't come in rolling basis, it's per cohort. And we have three cohorts a year. And that has a different cost, which is $9,500 for the six months for the companies that are uh, accepted into that phase. Um, the answer, does the total cost of the startup visa? Yeah, Marcus, I think I just mentioned it, uh, but let me know if you understood about the, the cost of the program in the comments below. So I will be, uh, you know, happy to answer again that part of the cost if it's not understood at this point. Um, the other question I have here is the startup visa restricted to companies in Latin America? Uh, I have a business in UK. Do I qualify? Yeah, this is for any international companies. Our community started with Latin America roots. That's why it's called Latin Startups. But we have already plans to change next year for global startups. So this is going to be another transition we have next year. Actually, at this point, at Latin Startups, uh, you know, the last cohort we just run uh, for the market validation program, most of the companies are outside from Latin America. Uh, so no worries, we work with international startups mainly, that's our goal uh, with the program. Uh, so to be eligible, eligible for the startup visa is not mandatory, the validation and market entry is a preference given to those in the phases, uh, the startup visa. Yeah, so Robert, let me tell you uh, why is that we are doing all these market entry and market validation is important for us because we have to put a supporting letter for the companies entering a startup visa program. And we need to uh, make sure that, uh, you know, the companies actually grow, uh, is going to grow in the, uh, expect, under the expectations of the government and our under own expectations. So when they don't come and validate market and do the market entry with us, it's very difficult for us to support a company that we don't know how they are going to do the process and based just simple uh, in business plan. That doesn't work for us. We need to know the company, we need to know the co-founders and we need to know how they are working and what, what are the plans and make sure plans are going to be uh, um, specific for, for what the company is. Uh, so I have another question here. Are these specific criteria that makes the company international does any company that does business in multiple countries qualify for international content? Yeah, so uh, exactly. It's like a company is uh, in any other country but Canada, you know? Companies in Canada don't require a startup visa program, at least the co-founders most of the time are permanent residents or citizens already. Uh, so they don't require to have that, that specific point. Uh, but any international company, anything outside of Canada will uh, be under the criteria. What is the point? Uh, at what point you get the letter of support? Yeah, Mario. So I was going to that part. So basically once uh, startups finish, uh, you know, with the market entry program, 
and let's say best case scenario start a finish in, in the second month, then uh, you will have to pitch the board of directors of LATAM startups, uh, the ones that I just show in the about us. And then, uh, you know, the board of directors, uh, if they approve the company and what you are presenting makes sense for them, immediately after, uh, you know, we accept them into the startup visa program and we'll start with the legal paperwork uh, at that point, at the beginning of the startup visa program. The reason why we do it at the beginning is because the letter of support has, a, 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 you know, it has a limitation in time to provide documentation uh, for the people that are entering into the program. Uh, so, uh, you know, this, uh, normally a, a letter of support is good for six months and people have six months to present documents for the permanent residence and work permit. So that's why I do it, uh, we do it at the beginning of the program. Uh, we try to go through the legal paperwork uh, once the companies are accepted. Um, also, please can you send us documents to read, uh, to read up via register email direct to us the web address where we can read up. Um, I'm not sure what type of documents uh, you need in particular. Uh, but basically, you know, whatever you need for filling out an application uh, and to know the criteria for the companies is in here, you know. Uh, and I have to say these guys, uh, just uh, to be clear, this is as clear as I can be uh, as well with companies when they, they are actually applying for the process is that even if we give the supporting letter to companies, the government can still reject your case. So being said that we, uh, thanks God we haven't had the first case rejected or even under a peer review. We try to put very strong cases under a startup visa program. Startup visa program for us is a tool that startups can use in order to uh, bring their global companies to Canada. But we are not an immigration lawyers. Uh, we are not an immigration firm. So for us, business come first. So for us, what is important is really how you're going to grow your business here. And if it makes sense to bring your business to Canada, because that's the other thing, we kind of make sure that the company actually will have a potential uh, to enter to uh, the Canadian and US market. Otherwise, for us, uh, you know, we reject many cases per day uh, that are trying to enter to the programs because many times it doesn't make sense. Uh, if you are thinking to submit an application, try to submit an application very, very strong uh, with answers. Sometimes the answers are very uh, weak uh, and it's difficult for us to understand what you are trying to make in your case. Uh, Business-wise, we may accept all the cases, uh, but that doesn't make sense at the end of the program if the government will reject you. Uh, so for us, it's very important that from the beginning, cases are strong enough uh, to enter to start a visa program. And again, don't think about a start a visa program as the end uh, goal for your business. There are too many other uh, immigration processes that you can think, think about and have a, have a look in order to uh, you know, uh, create a case for you to become here an entrepreneur as well. Um, so the board of directors do not accept the business. Does it mean that the money is spent in market validation as of landing was a waste. Well, that depends, Mario. <laughs> like, uh, are you doing this just to get a visa or are you doing this for your business? Because if you do it just to get a visa, then your, your money was waste then, uh, you know, but we are not wasting here time and money on nobody. Uh, so we want to take cases that are real businesses and real businesses that can go global. So uh, we are not going to accept cases just for, for the sake of the Stata Visa program. That's, that's for sure, I can tell you. Um, so in many, many cases, uh, we just finished uh, again with one of the groups uh, for, uh, for the first uh, stage of the program. And we have seen already the results uh, you know, for uh, the market validation part. We always see the results in the market validation part. And for those that are bringing real businesses and they are really concerned about growing a business here, I think they will see the value on the program. Uh, so this is the acceleration part. Again, this is the part that comes with the startup visa program and the acceptance. Uh, and then we are focusing in this part in getting the right talent in your company 
getting the right investment pitch, meeting investors, um, uh, having events around you that can get in a better branding for your company, grants and loans applications, of course, understanding taxes and accounting is important for us and uh, have a very good company valuation is also important for us. Um, so now should I have another question here? Um, must the company be tech-based? Yeah, well, basically, if you have intellectual property, normally it's in tech-type-based uh, companies to enter to start a visa program. Um, in, if you go to the government application for the start a visa program, they don't say there per se that you have to have intellectual property, but when we are filling out the, uh, the, the support letter for the Stata Visa program, they ask for intellectual property, and this is a key part of the Stata Visa program. Uh, the government of Canada is looking for a strong uh, intellectual property. We are not talking here about trademarks. We are talking here about strong copyrights and patents, if it's the case. Uh, many times in software, uh, comes to a copyright and not on a patent, but when you are talking about IoT products or uh, products that are connected with technology, then we are talking about a patent. Uh, so uh, that's, that's very important into the program. Are all the five applicants required to be shareholders in the company? Can a director without shares apply? Uh, no, unfortunately, if that director is going to require a permanent residence, it requires to have uh, shares over the company. And the minimum, if you have five co-founders, then you minimum have 10% each co-founder uh, in shares for the company. So that being said that, you know, you can, the minimum is 10%. Uh, in, and the five co-founders have to have 50% of the company own in order to qualify for the Stata Visa program. If that share uh, holder is already a permanent resident, a citizen, or doesn't require, uh, you know, a visa right now, then it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, it can be a, a shareholder uh, in, and, you know, become a part of the program, uh, but, you know, doesn't necessarily have to enter into the process of getting a visa per se. Um, okay, so that's basically how the programs work. So I have to come back here uh, to this link in the programs. You can actually access this pretty easy in our website. So you know, phase one and phase two are rolling basis. We are accepting startups in rolling basis from June and on. And that the minimum commitment in between the two of them is going to be three months. Maximum commitment could be even more months, uh, but our ideal case is three months. And then the acceleration programs comes into cohorts. So our cohorts are starting in, in January, June, and October. So those are our cohorts for the Startup Visa program. When companies finish market, uh, market entry strategy and they are ready to pitch the board of directors, they can enter into any of those cohorts uh, when it's available in the market. So either is January, June, or October. Um, so at, the, at this moment, if you are thinking about Shall I have a case really? Do, do I have a case for uh, entering to start a visa program? Uh, you can perhaps uh, take a look of the type of startups we have in uh, either, you know, corporate program. This doesn't have to, anything to do with the, uh, with the programs that I just mentioned before, but this is um, uh, for the question, for example, that Luis made, uh, you know, what type of companies enter into a corporate program. You can take a look of here. But you, thank, you can take a look of what type of companies we have right now under the portfolio of uh, our startup visa. And then also what type of companies are in soft landing program uh, or soft landing alum, alumni. We don't put here the first phase of the program. This here is going to change for market entry uh, alumni because that's how uh, is named this phase right now. Uh, we don't put the first phase here because it's a very short phase and many times we don't know, uh, you know, how the company will develop after the first phase. But I have to say that, uh, you know, we have helped over 100 companies already uh, since 2017 from more than 20 countries uh, uh, so far. And uh, we have been having very, very good, strong cases in the market for these companies. Have another question here. 
Uh, so can the startup have Canadians as shareholders? Yeah, totally. They can have, uh, you know, uh, Canadians as a shareholders. Actually, that helps uh, when you are uh, um, incorporating the company. Uh, we normally advise to incorporate the company at federal level, uh, but you know, with headquarters, for example, in Ontario, will help you a lot to have shareholders in Canada. This, this is uh, this is um, uh, you know one of the requirements, at least for Ontario. But if you don't have uh, you know shareholders in the in, in Canada. And you have all your co-founders are, uh, you know, uh, people that are not either citizens or permanent residents. Then they can be, um, uh, you know, incorporated in either in British Columbia or New Brunswick, and there is no problem around that. And even having headquarters, uh, you know, in Ontario afterwards, uh, you can do that part for sure. Um, more questions here. Uh, Liberty. How much did you pay? Uh, my last question was answered. How much do you pay for the incubator? So I mentioned it, Liberty already. Uh, basically, each of the programs has a cost of uh, the first two programs, $2,500. This is American dollars, phase one and phase two. Uh, this is a cost per month. Uh, so our ideal case is that people will finish the programs, uh, the first one and phase two, uh, we'll finish the program in three months, okay? And then the third phase is a different cost because it's per cohort and it's a six months program, it's $9,500. So it depends on the company, it depends on the case, you know, that amount will differ, but uh, you know, our ideal case is that people will spend three months paying $2,500 per month for up to five co-founders uh, for the two first phases, and then the third phase is a different one, six months for $9,500 up to five co-founders. This is not that each co-founder pays, is the group you know, of co-founders that, that is uh, required to be a part of the program. So I'm not sure if anyone has any other questions about our programs at this point. Uh, but that's basically the information about the rolling basis um, and the criteria that you need to have in order to enter to our programs. This is the minimum criteria that we need to see in our programs. Now, if you go to the apply link, uh, you know, and you enter to our job forms, uh, basically, uh, you will see there that the information that you are providing is about your business, uh, who is your customer, uh, you know, um, how much money do you have to make this process? Because as you can see, this is not an easy process. Um, we try to facilitate as best as possible. Um, yes, it's $9,500 for six months. And um, one thing that I didn't mention perhaps in the acceleration program is that the program goes for six months, but it has one year after uh, monitoring, which does, doesn't have any cost. Uh, we just have to monitor the companies and how they are developing, uh, you know, after the program. Uh, so we keep, you know, in contact with them every month for a year after the program finish. Um, another questions? Uh, yes, Robert, uh, solo entrepreneurs are accepted sometimes. Uh, it depends of the type of company they are proposing. I have to say the solo entrepreneur is a more difficult uh, kind of uh, case if you are aiming for a startup visa program. Again, uh, this is more because, uh, you know, getting a global company with just one entrepreneur, uh, kind of difficult, uh, you know, so just put in the shoes of the government. What do you think about that case? You know, it's, it's just difficult. Um, not saying this is impossible, uh, they can hire people here or, uh, you know, build a team in the process, but uh, it's a difficult case. I uh, have another question. At what stage is uh, to be resident in Canada? Oh, okay. Um, okay, for that part, for that question, uh, to have the check which uh, is, is stakeholders uh, in, the, in the company, we normally go into the incorporation process in market entry, which is the phase two. Uh, that's not requiring the phase one because uh, the phase one companies are still exploring if uh, you know this is a good move for the company. 
Um, so we are not forcing companies to incorporate in that phase. Uh, you will be, if you want to enter to start a visa program, you will need to have an incorporation at the end of the market entry program, which is ideally at the second month of the market entry program. Uh, so, uh, you know, just take in consideration that when we go through a market, market validation program, which is the first one, phase one, uh, in that part, many companies decide that this is not the right time or they don't have the right budget or they don't have the right team or maybe they just, uh, uh, you know, discover that the market was not filling their expectations and maybe, you know, makes sense to grow the company in any other market, may, maybe in their own emerging market, because most of the time the companies that we're bringing here are coming from emerging markets. Sometimes it makes sense for them to continue growing in emerging markets. So the market validation program for us is very important to discover those things and to make sure that they are making the right move uh, into Canada. We could perfectly do a program to finish up with a startup visa program, not considering those points, but it doesn't make sense for us that people spend time and money in a strategy that may not work in this market or maybe not the right time to do it. Uh, so we try again our best uh, to select the companies that have the best opportunities into this market. Uh, just to give you an idea, we're receiving between uh, four to five inquiries per day and applications, uh, you know, uh, to enter to our first phase program. Uh, so, uh, you know, we, we, don't, we don't accept more than 12 companies per cohort uh, because of the capacity that we have. Uh, so, for example, for the month of June, uh, we accept 12 companies. We have half of them already selected. Um, so, it, you know, for July uh, will be again 12 companies. We don't have companies in August because of the capacity of the cohort uh, is, is going to be very difficult for us. But we are going to have companies again in September. And again, the maximum capacity we have in there is 12 companies. Um, so we tried our best to uh, if we select the company is because we see that we are not going to harm the company financially or with the move that they are doing actually makes sense for us. Uh, so this is, again, nothing about uh, this data visa program. Uh, it's not about immigration. We are all about businesses. Um, so it, it's, it's important that you consider that part. So other things that we have that may help you uh, if you are still considering, you know, your alternatives in the market and this is not, uh, you know, something that you will do right away, uh, I will recommend you to go to our events. We have Canada 101 coming up uh, with our lawyers in Immigration Incorporation and we have a session about agile investment. This is a workshop that last uh, you know, several hours in one day. And basically, uh, you know, you pay just $27 to get access to the best advice possible for your case, uh, you know, during these workshops. So this gives you basically an idea. If you are still not sure about, uh, you know, moving your company here, uh, or you are still in early stage and you, and you want to move your company here at some point, this will give you a better idea uh, of how to do it and what type of visa, if your concern is about visas, what type of visa you will require for an entrepreneur. Uh, we also have our annual conference coming up uh, where uh, you, know, you will have um, amazing contacts with people. We are using a platform uh, that connects people and people can do networking for three minutes. Every three minutes, the platform will connect with somebody. And we have over 20 speakers actually uh, coming to the conference uh, from Latin America, Canada, uh, you know, different parts. Uh, we have our entrepreneurs in there that already uh, have gone through the programs and they already kind of experience uh, what has been, you know, to bring their companies here. Uh, so you will have different type of entrepreneurs telling you different stories, uh, you know, in between the challenges and opportunities they have seen bringing their companies into the Canadian market, North American market in general. Uh, this is three days conference. You can go ahead. Uh, you are going to receive probably an email from us, uh, you know, with a free link 
where you can take advantage and uh, you know um, add yourself to the annual conference and get some networking around. Uh, some other things that we have in our website, of course, is uh, white papers. Um, if you are curious about you know the different markets we work with. Uh, initially, as I mentioned, uh, we are very we were very focused in Latin America, so you will see different uh, Latin American uh, you know um, white papers. Uh, but you also will see uh, you know a white paper about Canada and how strong the Canadian ecosystem is. Uh, these white papers are going to be um, updated this year because it's every two years that we update white papers, and you have free access to this information as well. Uh, and for those that are looking to, uh, you know, connect with our community, either on a volunteer level or, uh, you know, uh, being hired by our community, we always post jobs, uh, you know, in our website. Right now it's empty because we just finished, uh, you know, hiring a new team. Uh, but in the few months uh, ahead, we always post, uh, you know, um, new opportunities to be a part of our community. Uh, our innovation center, and I will finish with this part here. Uh, our innovation center gives you the opportunity first uh, to have a virtual tour, uh, you know, enter to this part and you will see how our offices look like, uh, you know, in some point uh, people just take uh, a, a, during the COVID-19, they, they take this address as the commercial address to incorporate the company. And we come every Tuesday here so far uh, without any problems, you know, working with some entrepreneurs from here. Um, we are embedded in the Ontario Centers of Innovation. Uh, this is the government entity from the government of Ontario that helps uh, uh, startups and accelerators and incubators with grants and opportunities to become a part of different programs. So we are in a very, very nice location uh, with very good connections with other angel groups and uh, other entrepreneurs that are a part of our uh, community. And, uh, you know, we here we have information about the corporate program that doesn't have anything to do with a startup visa program. This is more for uh, medium sized big corporations that want to, uh, you know, expand their business, expand their technology, improve the technology, and uh, connecting, uh, you know, people with the community, also getting talent. You know, the uh, businesses have different uh, type of necessities. So we try our best to uh, give them a customized type of program. Uh, so we have here two examples. One is Godelius. This, this company comes from, uh, from Chile. Uh, they have, uh, you know, an opportunity to work with robots and mining. And they came actually in the first year of the pandemic. They started with us in January, 2020. And they finished up that year with a, um, a pilot project with one of the most, the biggest mining companies we have in Canada, uh, you know, and this is, uh, you know, thanks to the connections and the work that we have been doing with them, they finish with the goal that that we need to to have with them, and they still are the second year with us, uh, so we are very grateful to have them. And Ciara Group uh, is another uh, type of company. They, they come from Mexico and they are coming to improve technology so they can be more competitive. In, in, in Latin America in particular with the technology that they are developing here. Uh, so we are developing also a very customized program for them. Uh, so, okay, guys, I think that's it. Uh, but if you want to have, do you, you have any questions at this point? Any other questions? Thank you for all the questions you have posted uh, so far in, uh, in the chat uh, part of this presentation. Uh, but if you have any other questions right now, this is the, your time to ask me questions. Uh, if not, this session is going to be recorded. Uh, it's recorded right now. And we are going to share the recording with you in case that you uh, have any uh, extra, uh, you need any extra information from us. Uh, so just see. Okay, so it seems like uh, everybody is okay with the presentation. Again, thank you uh, for your attention uh, today. I hope that you become a part of any of our events coming up or become a part of any of our programs. Uh, any other questions, just uh, send us a note uh, to contact at latamstartups.org. Uh, you can go here and go to contact and just send us a note uh, if you have any particular case or any particular uh, uh, you know, sorry, I went to about us. Uh, any particular case or any particular uh, question that I couldn't answer uh, during this call here, okay?
Thank you, guys. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you.